I am proudly voting yes. In a vote of 36 to 13, the New York City Council unanimously voted in October to close Rikers Island by December 31st, 2026. We are on the cusp of a new, more humane era. Instead, the city opting for four smaller borough-based jails in Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Manhattan. We visited solitary confinement last week. It was like a bad horror movie. It closes the chapter on the notorious complex that has been plagued by violence and corruption. A lot of blood everywhere. It cut me on the right side of my face. Something PIX11 has been focused on reporting for years now. Headline making videos highlighting violence from fights among inmates to attacks and slashings on correction officers. Entire units vandalized and destroyed by gang members. Two of us versus 50 blood members. Earlier this year, PIX11 zeroed in on the numbers with the lowest inmate population in decades. Assaults on staff grew by 10% in 2018, with nearly 1,000 officers injured, a number on the rise since 2014. At my last visit to Rikers in 2017, still human, still human. the department touted reform programs to PIX11 that was supposed to reduce violence, improve quality of life for inmates and staff, and reduce recidivism. This particular house was restarted back in February of 2016, um, about 80 days with no violent incident in this particular island. But it wasn't enough for the city to keep the island open, with some members saying closing the island is the wrong thing to do. This plan misses the mark in making real, real systematic investments into neighborhoods. All right, well, as the plan goes, it is happening. Rikers Island will shut down by 2026 and span out over four borough-based jails. We'll get into that conversation in just a bit, but let's introduce our two guests here. Councilman Rory Lansman, the chair of the City Council's Committee on the Justice System and Correction Officer Benevolent Association President Elias Husamadine. So good afternoon to both of you. Good afternoon. I know you have... Uh, <clears throat> differing viewpoints on this plan. So I want to begin first with the actual vote in the city council, councilman. Um, this cost $8.7 billion to do over the next 10 years to build these new borough-based jails. Why did you vote yes? Our criminal justice system is broken and there's probably no better representation of that than Rikers Island. It is a violent dystopian nightmare that is unsafe for correction officers, for inmates, for the civilian staff. And over the course of decades, through different mayors, Republican and Democrat, nobody has been able to change that culture. And a big part of the reason is the physical infrastructure of Rikers itself, mm -hmm. the fact that it is off on an island, and to a certain extent out of sight, out of mind. And this is an investment that, that I, as a council member, am willing to raise my hand and vote yes on uh, for a fairer criminal justice system. Did you see that there was a possibility, because people are saying, wow, this cost $8.7 billion. Why not invest <laughs> that money into the current island and fix the problems that are there? I know some of the structures are falling apart, but invest in the current structure rather than build it elsewhere. So it, it would cost that much to do those kinds of reforms and changes and, and, and rebuild Rikers Island as it is. So if we were going to do that, why don't we build jails that are closer to home, closer to people's communities, save the city the, the expense of ferrying people back and forth from Rikers to the different jails throughout the five boroughs, and create a new, fairer criminal justice system from scratch that doesn't ship people off to this horrible island where, um, for decades, violence and mayhem has reigned. And, and in the current way that the structure is, you have to go through quite the process to get to Rikers Island for visitors, for family members, for lawyers. But Elias, for correction officers, 10,000 of them are currently uh, employed by the Department of Corrections. Yes. And it hasn't been an easy road for them. You've been on our program, on our morning news program, over time and time again talking about violent incidents. Why are you against the actual closure? I'm against the... the what I'm against is when people try to act as if the physical structure is the reason violence exists. It has nothing to do with the physical structure. It has everything to do with the population that you give us. Example, the 12 people who murdered Pablo uh, Guzman. They were turned over to who? Us. Why? Because they were violent, right? Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with the building. Has nothing to do with the location. They talk about Rikers Island as if it's somewhere, you know, in, in, in 
Alaska. It's in East Elmhurst. Mm -hmm. You can get there by train or bus. They just went to Norway to visit Norway. Guess where Norway jail is located? In the rural area. Mm -hmm. It's not located in the community where the people are. So I just feel like there's a lot of hypocrisy. Uh, the violence can be reduced if they give us what we actually need. Which is? In order to do that. Inmates, detainees have to be held accountable. And the problem that we have in the last five years under this mayor, under this city council, inmates and detainees are not held accountable. So the, the current structure, that the, the reason why they want to shut it down is because they're saying they would like to reduce the jail population, right? The mayor came out and said that he would like to see the jail population below 5,000 as of July. Um, and right now it's hovering around 7,400. By the time this goes into effect and for it to work, the population would have to be below, correct me if I'm wrong, Councilman, 4,000. The uh, four borough-based jails in total will have about 4,600, a capacity for about 4,600 inmates. So you're hoping, and the reason to vote for this, would be that the incarceration would continue to be on the decline. Right. So it's more than a hope. Um, a big part of the Close Rikers movement, a big reason that I support Closing Rikers, is because it does force the city to end over-policing and mass incarceration. It does force the city to confront the fact that we have people sitting in our jails, sitting on Rikers Island, which today has a capacity of about 15,000, right? It does force the city to put fewer people in jail, people who should not be in jail because they can't afford their cash bail or because they committed some low-level offense or because they committed some technical violation of their parole. That's part of it also, reducing the jail population in New York City reducing the number of um, uh, jails that are available for the city to put people into is a big part of forcing the city to put fewer people in jails. But see, wait, but mm -hmm. see this is again a part of the myth. Currently, out of the 7,000 inmates we have, there's about 1,700 of them who are bailable, mm -hmm. who if they had the money could, but again, and I hate to keep going back to it, that also include the 12 people who murdered uh, Junior Guzman, bailable. So at the end of the day, what we have in jail right now, there's no one, the, the people we have now are the people you don't want on the street. It's the guys that you showed on your show with the gun in Brooklyn chasing right, someone. Right, I don't think anybody's so, saying they want to see those back on the street. But the reality is that's what we have in jail right now. We don't have turnstile jumpers. We don't have shoplifters. That's not who we have. But, the, but, but for a long time it was. Okay, but let's talk about what we have. For a long time it was, and it should not But that's why the mayor is saying that he re believes the population can go below, because things like bail reform, when it, I, that when I will go into office, effect in January of It's not going to go below for the simple reason that New York City has 8.6 million people. And for anybody to think that we only going to have 3,300 criminals, people who rob, beat old people, stab people, mm -hmm. murder people, throw them in the train tracks. And for anybody to think that 8.6 million people, we're only going to have 3,300 people that do things like that, is, is, it's insane. They're insane. When I took office, not realistic. the same time the mayor took office, the population in the city's jails was over 10,000. And we heard the same things. Everybody who's in jail has to be there, otherwise we won't be safe. Today, the population in our city's jails is around 7,000. 7, and we have become more safe as a city. And that's where not it's going less, to stay. Right? It's so going to stay come January 1st, come January 1st, as a result of the, the criminal justice reforms that happened up in Albany last year, you're going to see another few thousand people um, uh, less in our city jail system mm -hmm. because of bail reform and, and other reforms. Raise the age. R raise the age, which, which kicked in a, yeah. a, a while ago. Um, we have been able to steadily and consistently reduce the population of our jails while maintaining our status as the safest big city in the country. So I want to go over the jail locations right now because we're getting a lot of good comments. Natalie Smith right now is asking, so where are all the prisoners moving to? So the four <laughs> borough-based jails, 320 Concord the Avenue, which is in the Mott Haven section of the Bronx, 275 Atlantic Avenue, it's in downtown Brooklyn, uh, 126 82nd Avenue in Kew Gardens, Queens, 125 White Street in Lower Manhattan. Staten Island does not get one because the Staten Island population of inmates currently, I know you're going to disagree, is 250 they're gonna, or less, so they're going to be housed in Brooklyn. What happens, Councilman, because I know a lot of people are asking right now, if crime goes up? Right. 
So three of the four new jails are in locations where there already are jails. In Brooklyn, in Manhattan, and Queens, the new new jail is the one that's in the Bronx. And that was the most controversial one um, in the city council vote. Um, we believe that with sound criminal justice policies that have over the last 10, 15 years shown a steady decline of the jail population, that we can reasonably keep New York City safe with a, um, a jail capacity under 5,000. Right, and, but somebody like Wendy is saying, cross your fingers that crime does not exceed 3,000 people since that's the max, max amount of beds. It's not a matter of crossing one's fingers. The NYPD, our, our correction officers, these are professional law enforcement agencies. We did not get to this point where crime is low and our corrections population is low by crossing our fingers, by wishing, or by hoping. There are policies that reduce um, uh, criminality, that, that, that make us safer, that reduce our jail population. And if we stay, uh, stick to those policies and those practices and those focuses, this should be, this 20-year trend of reducing crime and reducing population in our jails, this should be our new normal. Here's the reality. When you have the, ch the top cops saying to you, this is a problem. You don't listen to him. In 2014, when we said to the mayor, are you City referring Hall, to what he's saying? He doesn't appreciate bail reform, or he's gonna, it's going to cause the, problems. Yes. Okay. When we have in 2014, the commissioner at that time, Pont, saying, "Do not eliminate punitive segregation. It's too dangerous. It's not going to work." So they did it. 2014, crime in the jails went up. Violence went up. 2015, violence in the jail went up. 2016, 2017, 2018, and it still hasn't gone down. So it is across your finger because the reality is you keep not listening to the boots on the ground. You're not listening to the people who actually do the work. And the public should be afraid. And, I, and I'm not here to warmonger, but currently they're going to be al allowing people to leave jail for what they call nonviolent crime. So right now, Dan, if you go downstairs and someone approaches you and say, give me your phone, and you give it to them, and the cops come and they catch him and arrest him, he's not going to jail. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So if your mother is going shopping and she gets home and in the building he's, she's approached and they say, give me your pocketbook, guess what? It's a nonviolent crime. He's not going to jail. Unless, so for anybody to, unless what? Uh, from what I understood with our conversation with Police Commissioner O'Neill when he was on our morning news program, if somebody had a prior rap sheet that involved criminal... So violence. what if he didn't have a prior rap sheet? So how many times can I come to you and take your phone? Mm -hmm. How many times can I come to you and take your pocketbook? Again, we're playing a lot of games because the judges, a lot of their discretion is being taken away, the district attorneys. So at the end of the day, for us to say, think that it's not across your finger and hope to die, it's really just a, it's a pipe dream. Do you have a, you have a thought on that? Yeah, I mean, let's understand the, the population at Rikers overwhelmingly are people who have have not yet been convicted of or like a the crime. 12 people that killed right. Junior Guzman. Right. They have and not been convicted. It, well, but they're, but they're in jail. But, but they no, haven't. But been most convicted. people on Rikers Island are waiting trial. They're right? waiting trial. Right. Right. And most of them, of them could walk out the door tomorrow and be amongst us. Only if, 1,700. If, if only they had the cash bail only to pay their way out. Only 1,700 out of the 7,000 or 7,400 inmates we have can walk out of jail today. Only 1,700. Hundred. The rest of them have been remanded. So a lot of people are asking, you know, why now? What's going to happen now? Um, some people are saying leave Rikers alone, right? What's going to happen to the island or some of the comments that are coming in live right now? Because a lot of people are saying this was a land grab. It was to extend That's LaGuardia it Airport. It was to build some buildings that have beautiful no. views of Manhattan. So what do you... We can't say no that that's not true. When they hired Judge Jonathan Lippman to do the, the, the assessment, mm -hmm. all you have to do is... Google him, read his 180 page report where he's very upfront. We want to extend the runway in LaGuardia. Mm -hmm. It says it in there. We want to put more additional terminals. We want to build a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. It's in there. They were very straight up uh, about what they wanted to do with it. So we can't say no, that's not the. So they want to repurpose Rikers. I'm not against, nobody's against 
progress. If that's what you want to do, say that's what you want to do. But don't say it because it's dis dis discrepant. I, there's a school on 57th Street and 10th Avenue with the scaffolding all over the place because yeah. it's deteriorating, falling apart. I have jails in better conditions than we have public schools.